Hello everyone, in this session we are going to take a look at the ink and paint material inside 3ds Max. Ink and paint material is generally used to get cartoon effects out of 3D objects and here as you can see that we have a scene set up with a character in it and we want to give it a little bit of stylish, a drawn on paper kind of a look. So here is where ink and paint material comes into play. We can access the material layer by pressing the M key on the keyboard alternately we can go to the rendering menu and from the rendering drop down list we can select the material editor to impact material editor. Here is our material editor. We will now just choose our paint and ink material. So we will just rename it as ink and paint. And from the standard tab we will choose the ink and paint material from this drop down and click ok. This is our paint and ink material and we will apply this paint and ink material to this uh, particular character. So we will choose choose the character and assign material to selection. I will replace the material and let's take a render of it to see how it looks like. This is what we will get out in render. If we compare the scene and the result, we can see that how ink and paint material has converted this 3D model into a flat 2D image. Now the ink and paint material has basically two components. One is the paint component, other is the ink component. These two components together in a combination gives us this effect. If in case we switch off the ink component of it and then take a render of it, all we can see is just the paint component of our material and if we in any case switch off this paint component and switch on the ink component, we will just, we'll just have drawn lines on a piece of paper. So for the sake of flexibility on this material, we have been given paint and ink controls separately. First we will have a look at the paint controls of this material. In the paint controls, we have three attributes, lighted, shaded and highlighted. These three attributes in combination work with each other to give us a very good hand-drawn type of effect. Lighted. The first is a lighted. The lighted attribute actually is the base fill color of this object, which is by default blue. We can even change it by clicking on the source. We get a color selected and we can just change it to any of the colors of our liking. Then we'll take a render and it is red in color. And we can also apply a map to this particular attribute. We select it and for the time being, we'll apply a wood map to it. And here in the tiling, we'll just pump it to 10 by 10 by 10 in all three dimensions. And then take a render of it. So when we apply a map to the certain this lighted attribute of the paint controls, we see that the fill color has been replaced by the wood texture we have applied out here. Then we also have a spinner in here to blend this particular value with the color assigned. If we decrease it down to 50, we can see that we are getting a blend between the lighted color and the map applied to it. This is what we are going to get. And if we switch it off, let's say if we assign a value of 0 to it, we won't be able to get any of the blend between the wood texture and the color. The only thing we are able to see is the color. And just happens the opposite of it when we bump it all the way till 100. We are only able to see the wood texture, neither not the color. And now we just switch it off for now. And then we have the paint level. Paint level actually refers to the number of gradations we are going to get, the gradient feel we are going to get in the color. Now this value ranges from 0 to 255. So we can just bump it all the way up till say 50 and then have a render of it. You might be able to see that here we are getting a little bit of gradations in the shadow areas. This is because we have bumped up our paint levels to 50. Now this particularly paint level, the shadow which we are seeing, able to see here greatly depends on the shaded parameter of this paint controls. The shaded parameter is a percentage value of the lighted color. By default it is set to 70, that is if the shaded color will be a 70% color of the, shade, uh, the lighted color. If we take this up all the way up to 100 and then render it, we would still get a very flat image because the shaded color is equal to our lighted color. But if we mop it down all the way to 0 and then do a render of it, what we are going to get is a very dark shadow area. Even if you want a different color for the shaded area, you can just switch this checkbox off and then you get a swatch. You can click on the swatch and assign any color of your liking. Let's say here I am going for a bit of green. 
so that it's, it would be easier to see. Okay. Now we'll take this trigger render of it. And here you can see all the shadow areas that have been a different color previously are now green in color. Even in this parameter, you are you have the ability to assign a map to it. If I feel like assigning a map, I will just go for checker. Okay. And we'll tile this up to 20 by 20 by 20 to get a very uh, small checker. And we'll take a render of it. So now we can see that wherever the green color had been previously, we are getting a checker pattern out there. Also, here also we have a spinner to blend it with the original color. And we can take it down to 50 and this is what we are going to get as a result. If you don't want this map to work, we will just switch it off by uh, switching off this checkbox and re-render the scene. Now we have another parameter that is known as the highlight parameter. We can also assign highlight to this particular uh, model. If we check on highlight, by default the highlight color is uh, white and this is what we are going to get. When we uh, render this with highlight, it actually uh, dooms our illusion of 2D. But we can have it a different way if we change the color of it to something that's a little matte rather than white. Uh, maybe something between this brown. Yes. And then render it. We can easily have our have it as our 2D way. Even we have our glossiness parameter which controls the size of the specular, which is set to 50 for, by default. If we work it all the way to 100, we are going to get a very small highlight very small size of highlight and if we are going to take it down to zero we are going to get a very flat highlight to this particular model so uh, and here also you have the attribute in, even in the highlight attribute we can assign a map to it if you want to like if i am going for a, a dent maybe so this is what we are going to get and because the tiling is very low we are getting a very uh, sparse value Increasing in all three dimensions and then rendering out the scene, we are going to get the dent uh, pattern in the um, highlight portion. And we can always uh, change our glossiness to adjust the area uh, which is being affected by this particular map. And if you don't want the highlight, we can just switch it off from here and we render our scene. So, this was all about the paint controls in ink and paint materials for this max. Thank you.